Hey there, it's Gregory from DAP University. So welcome back to this multi-part tutorial series where I'm showing you how to build ETHSwap. This is a instant cryptocurrency exchange where you can buy and sell tokens at a fixed price. So if you're just joining us in this series, this is the third video. And in the past two videos, we've been creating the smart contracts for this. Uh, the first is the uh, you know token smart contract. And the other is the actual uh, contract that allows people to buy and sell the tokens. All right. So this is the finished product um, that we haven't quite gotten to. We're just still on the back end of creating the smart contracts. So let's continue on with that before we can build this finished product here. All right. So uh, yeah, before we do that, as always, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory from DAP University. And on this channel, I teach you how to become a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in and you like this tutorial series, then click that like button down below and subscribe to the channel. That really helps these videos get found in the YouTube algorithm. All right. So also, if you love this tutorial series and you want to take the next step, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. OK, so Let's continue on. Like I said, in the last video, we worked on this uh, eSwap contract and we created the buy tokens function. But in this video, we're going to create a way uh, for investors to also sell their tokens. So if you look here, you know, this is the buy, sorry, the buy tokens function we created last time. Now we're going to create a sell tokens function. So we'll do that just like this. Um, we'll go ahead and give ourselves some space here. All right, and we'll say function, say so sell tokens, just like we did with the buy tokens function. And I'm going to even go up farther on the screen. Okay, so what needs to happen inside this function? Well, basically, we want to do the opposite of what we did here. So instead of transferring tokens uh, from the eSwap exchange to the investor, we want to do it the other way around. We want to transfer um, tokens from the investor to ETHSwap, and then we also want to give um, the investor Ether. Okay, so we need to write function that, or sorry, some code that performs a sale. Let's say perform sale. So how do we do that? Well, first we can give the user Ether. We can say um, msg sender. Say transfer, and then some sort of ether amount. Okay, so we haven't defined this yet, but that's the core code that we're going to write in order to give the user Ethereum. Okay, so don't forget msg.sender is the person calling this function. Look, we saw that in the last section here. All right, and so transfer is not a function that you've seen yet inside of uh, Solidity for Ethereum. Okay, we saw it here on the token. This is you know the transfer function for ERC twenty tokens. Let me pull that up right here. Transfer, right? But here what we're doing is calling transfer uh, for Ether. You know the native cryptocurrency of the Ethereum blockchain. Um, so what we're doing is saying send Ether to the person calling this function. And we want to tell it, you know, how much. We haven't defined this amount yet, all right? So what we're going to do is pass in an amount here, uint amount, all right? So we're basically we're going to say, you know, how many tokens are they selling, right? Let's say they want to sell 100 tokens. Well, they'll pass in 100 here. So we can calculate this ether amount just like we calculated this token amount, but we'll just do the opposite. Say, um, Calculate the amount of ether to redeem. And we'll say you int ether amount equals amount. All right, this is the number of tokens that they're selling. So we're going to take the number of tokens they're selling and we're going to divide it by the rate. Okay. So remember here, we multiplied the number of the amount of ether that they were going to send by the amount of, sorry, let me back that up. <laughs> we multiplied the amount of ether they sent when they went to buy tokens by the rate to determine the token amount. So when they sell the tokens, we work backwards. We take the amount of tokens that they want to sell and we divide it by the rate to get the ether amount that they receive whenever they sell the tokens. Okay. And then we send them that much, 
right? So that sends Ether to the investor. But now what we want to do is also um, transfer tokens from the user, the investor, to the ETH swap exchange so that it gets the tokens back. You know, it's selling the tokens. So we have to send the tokens to the exchange. And we also have to, you know, give Ether to investors. So it's a two-way street, right? So how we do that is we say token. And then, you know, here we did transfer, you know, token transfer. All right, we'll just we'll just do this for now. All right, and then what we want to do is swap this. All right, so we could say you know token amount here, and then swap them. And when I say swap, I mean instead of sending it to MSG sender, we can send it back to the smart contract. So we say um, address this. All right, we could do that. Right, and that would essentially transfer the tokens uh, to this, which is the smart contract, right? And then the amount, but this isn't going to work. So here's why. Basically, whenever the investor calls this function, um, it doesn't necessarily. It, we can't let the smart contract call the transfer function on an ERC twenty token like this on behalf of the investor. That's not how ERC20 tokens work. Otherwise, you could just like hide transfer functions inside of smart contract calls without people necessarily knowing about it. And you could like, you know, send your money away. <laughs> so uh, in order to avoid that, ERC20 has a special function called transfer from. All right. And so basically, this is what allows other smart contracts to spend your money. So we have to use this transfer from function inside of here. So say transfer from. All right, and so we say msg.sender. All right, so that's who it's going from. That's who it's going to, and this is the amount. So you see that here, from, to, amount. So this is the special function we use anytime you want a smart contract to spend your tokens for you, okay? Um, now, before we do that, you know, in the test, you'll see that we're gonna have to approve tokens first. Like that's how transfer from works. This approve function must be called before we can call transfer from. We'll see that in play in a minute. But uh, we don't have to do that inside of the smart contract. Um, basically, we can just do the approval outside of it. And then uh, we'll do this transfer from function anytime we call sell tokens, which we'll see in a minute. Like basically, you just have to call approve and then sell tokens and this will work, okay? So we'll, we'll see that in play right now. Let's go ahead and test this out. We'll say truffle compile. Make sure there's no syntax errors before we update the tests. All right, okay, so we got a problem here. Um, we need to make this function public, all right? So we'll say public. That's gonna allow it to be accessed outside of the tongue, uh, sorry, of the smart contract. Okay, perfect. So now let's go to the tests, uh, ETH swap tests. We'll create a test down here. Let's go ahead and just copy this one. Uh, say sell tokens. All right, and we'll um, clear out all this. And we'll clear all this. We're just gonna get the skeleton in place here. All right, so for the description, we'll say it allows user to instantly uh, sell tokens instead of purchase. Uh, to ETH swap for a fixed price. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna reverse that. Boom. So it allows you to instantly sell tokens to ETH swap for a fixed price. So um, inside of here, what we wanna do is call that function that we just created. So we'll say result equals await uh, ETH swap sell tokens, all right? And let's just sell the all 100 tokens here that we purchased back to the exchange. Say tokens 100, and we'll say, you know, from investor, right? So I'll show you, this is gonna blow up. Sorry, truffle test. It's not gonna work, and I'll, I'll illustrate why. <laughs> Let's hope it actually doesn't work. Yeah. Okay. Boom. So it it incurred um, it, it reverted. All right. So why? 
Well, it's just like what I was saying a minute ago. In order to call transfer from, we have to approve the tokens before the smart contract can spend them for us. Okay, this this um, function that I'm talking about here. This is what allows smart contract to spend our tokens. So we have to call this on the token itself before we can call buy tokens, or sorry, sell tokens on ETHSwap. So I'll show you. Let's say uh, await invest or token. So not ETH swap, but token. Approve ETH swap address. All right, so this is saying we want ETH swap to be able to spend the tokens for us. And then we specify an amount. So we'll just say all 100 tokens. And then we'll just you know do the rest of these same arguments. So I'll make notes inside of here uh, that the investor must approve the purchase. And then, you know, this is the action where they actually sell the tokens. All right, so let's just run it and see if it works. All right, so now it didn't revert. So that shows you that we have to approve the tokens before we sell them. And this is gonna be a critical step whenever we develop the client side application as well, okay. So now what we wanna do is check that the investor balance um, went up, or sorry, went down. So we can just copy this example. So do this, and instead of um, 100, we'll just say zero, because they sold them, run the tests, see if it passes. And basically we're just gonna check the opposite in this test of what we looked at for the last test. <laughs> so yeah, that also worked, all right? So now we can make sure that the uh, ESWAT balance is correct after the purchase. All right, so ESWAT balance equals a weight, token balance of ESWAP. So now it should be back up to you know, a million. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the ESWAP balance um, should be zero, or sorry, the ether balance should be zero. All right, so it goes back to the way it was when we started the tutorial series. Or sorry, in the first test example. <laughs> awesome, perfect. So that's doing pretty well. Um, now let's go ahead and add an event to the sell tokens function, just like um, we did in this first example. So we'll copy this. And instead of um, tokens purchased or token purchased, we'll say token sold. And tell you what, while we're here, I'm gonna update this name. Uh, Let's do tokens, plural. All right, I'm gonna update that. So tokens sold. This is probably gonna cause some problems for people, so sorry. Um, but I just wanna make sure this is, it looks good before we continue. So same thing, it's gonna have the same arguments, account, token, amount, and rate. And then we'll just emit that at the bottom. So let's say, you know, emit an event. Uh, like this, emit an event, emit tokens, sold. Then we'll pass in msg.sender, uh, address of the token, right? Then the amount, and then the rate. And then similarly, you know, we'll go into the test um, and copy this same event check, right? We'll dig into the logs. Paste this here. Let's even say, uh, add some comments here. Say check logs to ensure that the event was emitted with the correct data. Add this comment here as well. And we'll update these values. So, you know, the account should be the investor, it should be a token address, it should be 100 tokens, and the uh, ether amount, should, or sorry, the rate should be 100. All right, so let's run the test and see if it passes. All right, it worked. Okay, so lastly, what I wanna do is, um, you know, add some requirements to this function, okay? So um, the first thing we wanna do is make sure that ETHSwap has enough ether uh, to redeem the tokens. So just like we did here, um, we wanna check that ETHSwap has enough ether whenever the sale happens. We'll do that before we perform the sale. Okay, so basically what we do is we can check the balance like this, address this dot balance, all right? And we wanna make sure it's greater than or equal to the ether amount, okay? And we wanna require that. All right, let's just run the test, see if it passes. 
Okay, boom. All right, so this is a really strange error. Um, <laughs> and yeah, this is this is a kind of a weird thing. All right, so this is a real strange quirk. You need to go to your truffle dash config file uh, right below here <laughs> and say EVM version uh, Petersburg. All right, so I don't want to get too in depth on why we need to do this, but just try it and hopefully it'll make your test pass. <laughs> try it again. And there we go. Awesome. So this is a really strange quirk, but this is a real gotcha. Um, just make sure you put this in your truffle dash config file here in order to continue. All right. So um, last thing I want to do is make sure that the, let's see here, that the um, user can't sell more tokens than they have. Okay. So I'm going to write the test first, actually. Uh, and then we're going to write the code. So basically, we'll test for failure here. So failure. I'm going to show you how to test for failure. Say investor can't sell more tokens than they have. Okay. So we'll say await ETH swap sell tokens. And we'll try to sell like, you know, 500. That's more uh, than the investor currently has. And we'll say uh, from investor. We say should be rejected. All right. Perfect. So let's run the test. It should fail. That's what we expect. And then we're going to write the code to make it pass. All right, perfect. And actually, it looks like it uh, passed the first time. And that's because, um, probably because the token is throwing an exception, uh, not necessarily the ETH swap smart contract. Okay. But what we can do is write an explicit requirement in the contract as well um, that would look like this. Okay. We say user can't sell more tokens than they have. And like I said, I think the ERC20 tokens already taken care of this for us, um, but we're gonna do it for tutorial purposes just to show you explicitly how you do it inside the smart contract. Say so, uh, require a token balance of MSG at sender is greater than or equal to amount, All right? I think it's because it's trying to tra I think whenever it calls the transfer from function, uh, it's trying to, you know, move tokens that you don't have. So it's going to throw an error anyway, but we're just going to add this here uh, so you can see how you check for it yourself. And there we go. Still passes. Awesome. So that's it, guys. That is the completed smart contract code. Congratulations. You've come a really long way. Uh, in this series so far. So there's one final step before I move on uh, to the next section. This is really important, don't miss this. We want to put the smart contracts, the completed smart contracts on the blockchain. So we'll say truffle, migrate, dash dash reset. And that's going to uh, put them on the blockchain and also put the final compiled versions inside of our truffle project like this. You can go to source, uh, or actually, sorry, build. Uh, where is it? So source contracts. Uh, sorry, source ABI is my fault. Uh, we can look at ETHSwap. All right, so here's the completed smart contract, and it even gives you, uh, let's see, network. Shows you the address of it on the network. All that kind of stuff. Awesome. All right, everybody. So congratulations. That's it for this part of the tutorial series. You know, we have successfully created... Uh, both of these smart contracts. We've essentially completed our backend uh, that we're going to use on the blockchain. In the next video, we're going to start on the client side website that's going to talk to the blockchain and interact with these smart contracts so that we can work towards building this out or we can actually you know, buy and sell tokens through the interface like this. All right, so uh, as always, click the like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you like this tutorial series. And if you wanna become a real world blockchain developer, then take that next step and head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. So until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.